Wow, Tropicana, y'all. Opened its doors in 1957. I mean, it was one of the hottest places to be and visit here in Las Vegas during that time. I mean, way before my time. But this place that we're standing at right now, the plaza area, it, it doesn't get talked about a lot. But right here, the plaza area here was a water cooling tower full of tulips and the whole vibe going on that you can see right there that basically they wanted to mimic Miami and Cubana, this whole vibe. But then they removed that to kind of do a little fresher and update, they erected two 300,000 pound Easter Island statues. Boom, boom, just like that. To kind of keep up with the times and keep things flowing. But then that went away. And once that went away with renovations that happened in I think 98, that just kind of changed the game. And it really hasn't made a comeback since. And what you see right here is what's left of this garden. Just low maintenance and fake grass. But hey, you know what? There's a lot of history that's inside of this place here. We've never stayed here. I, I, I can't believe we have never stayed here. We've passed this place many, many times, but I think by the time we were interested in this spot and in Vegas, it was already sort of its rundown moment, so we avoided it. But this spot, we come many times to take pictures like this, maybe like this, always like this, <laughs> and like that. <laughs> Quick. Today's video is sponsored by June's Journey. If you're into murder mystery games like I am, well get ready to sleuth your way through the most dynamic hidden object mystery games you've ever laid your eyes on. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing those same old detective stories where the hero is some brooding dude in a trench coat that he wears all year round, even in Miami. <laughs> Well, not here. The main character is June Parker. Gorgeous, sharp, savvy. She's like the Sherlock Holmes of the 1920s, which the Roaring 1920s happened to be the setting of this game. June's quest to uncover the truth of her sister's death. Yes, you heard right. And if that ain't enough, she's got to untangle a web of family secrets so complicated it makes the game Twister look straightforward. What I really like about this game, besides finding objects in some of the most beautiful and colorful settings, first we'll find, oh yes, the pearls. Nice. Ooh, and an orange which is on the table. I see a pine cone sitting on the chair and a trophy in the background. I'm getting one step closer to solving this murder. Or decorating your own island mansion is that the game is slightly challenging, yet the vibe is still relaxing. Yes, even for a murder mystery game. Download June's Journey for free by clicking the link in the description or the QR code you see on the screen. June's Journey is available on Android, iOS mobile devices, as well as PC through Facebook games. In 1957, when the Tropicana was built, it was at the time the most expensive and luxurious hotel on the Strip. As a matter of fact, it was the most expensive development in Vegas at all times during that time of $15 million. Now here's a fun fact, and you may not have known this, that the Fountain Blue owner Miami is the one that conceived and basically developed and built the Tropicana, which is why you get the vibe of Miami meets Cubana. And it was known as the Tiffany of the Strip, which today I think Fountain Blue is now like the Tiffany of the Strip. Most expensive and luxurious. Hmm. Wow, this is unbelievable. When you walk into the Tropicana and you look up, you see this massive stained glass ceiling. Now, it's kind of loud and it's probably a better angle, so come up, excuse me. Wow, this is a little quieter. Now this is the mezzanine level that actually has the Laugh Factory, which will show you other things like that. But this is where you can get a real amazing glimpse of this massive piece here. Unbelievable, this actually cost $1 million, 1979 to put up. It was the only, only thing of its kind back in that day and area. And from what I understand, behind the mirrors, before cameras were, this is another way for them to monitor through the glass 
the beautiful stained glass, monitor what's going on down on the gambling floors. Hopefully there's gonna be some mega buyer out there that loves what he sees and decides to take this for their collection. But if not, it's going down in history or maybe the Oakland A's will take a piece of this and put it as part of their ballpark as a piece of his history that they bought changed the game here. Okay. <laughs> so a little tasty bit of information we just got. So I asked a lovely staff member that's been here for 15 years. So a lot of the staff went to a job fair, a lot of the big owners and places. Now, when I asked her about the stained glass, she said there's a possibility that there are some interested folks looking into this already. One being the bone as a possibility and some others, but there's no full fact. This is just opinion from what she's saying. I'm just hoping that that is the case to preserve this lovely piece of art. Since we're all up here on the mezzanine level, I want to share with you a couple of popular shows that were here at the Tropicana, including the Laugh Factory right behind me. A lot of comedians have come through that door, including the famous impressionist Rich Little. Hi. Yes. Good to see you. Great to see you. Always, right? Yes. Just don't suck. Don't suck. Don't suck. Right. Just right. say it. <laughs> So what an iconic moment to actually be here at the closing, basically almost the closing weekend here at Tropicana to see some of the most incredible comedians in Las Vegas in one spot. Tate base over there, you have Carrot Top right behind me, and of course you have the magician themselves trying to capture some photos. So it's just one of those moments where here, I think everybody's kind of bringing in that closing moment at Tropicana where it's all about the love, the vibe, the family, and here, the comedy in the house. So let's see if we can say hello to Carrot Top. Carrot, um, take a photo with you. wants a photo. A photo. My, my husband's going to take the photo. And can I say what an iconic moment to be here at the Tropicana closing to have some of the most incredible yeah, right. Vegas no, legend comedians in town, yeah. right? Yeah. Including you. Yeah, I've been here for 30, 40 years. Exactly, like, rocking it. Well, thank you. Good to meet you. Oh. <laughs> 30, 40 years. Wow, legends. Wow, what's another real treat for all of us to see the comedians, some of the big comedians here in Las Vegas, like Carrot Top Murray, all come together. Kennedy, just for a chance to see one final performance here at the Laugh Factory at Tropicana. Now, not on the mezzanine level is the Tropicana Theater. Come on down. So the Tropicana Theater happens to be the largest venue inside the Tropicana. Now, it was 1,100 seats capacity in there. Back in 73, when this was designed, the man with the master plan who had a hand in designing it was Sammy Davis Jr. That's pretty freaking cool. Now, speaking of Sammy Davis Jr., did you know that Sammy Davis Jr. owned 8% of the Tropicana? Yes, one of the Rat Pack, Sammy Davis Jr. And why is that significant? Because he was the first black man to have ownership in a Las Vegas strip casino. That's significant. You go, boy. Ah, the Trago Lounge. In my opinion, still one of the nicest places to come to for a cocktail inside the Tropicana right before a show. It's got a good vibe. Hey! <laughs> hey! Thank you! How are you doing? Hey! Hi, Tanya. Nice to meet you. Uh, Lenny. Hi, Lenny. Nice, nice to, to meet y'all. Well, let me. Oh, yeah, Thank you. Turn it up, girl. Woo -hoo! <laughs> How are you guys? Wow, that's amazing. And speaking of which, it was great to run into some Turn Up World fam that have been coming to Vegas for years to come here just to co show a little bit of love to Tropicana one last time. But one of the interesting things and how it feels so surreal right now here is as you're kind of walking through the Tropicana, things are closing down, shutting down, including these slot machines right here. You know, Dave and I are huge slot machine players. We play all the time, but these slot machines right here will never be played again, at least not here at the Tropicana. Now back in 86, they went underwent a $70 million expansion and included an island tower, a five acre pool with man-made lagoons, floating blackjack tables, so a real popular highlighted spot to be at during that time. To make a long story short, back in that day, it was labeled as the island of Las Vegas. Ooh, 
And right next to the pool, you guys, from one area over here to another area over here is the Island Wedding Chapel. So you could actually get married right here, like you're on the island of Las Vegas. Another attest to how popular the Tropicana was back in the day, where a lot of movies were filmed there, including Viva Las Vegas, 1964, Elvis Presley. You had Diamonds, Are Forever, 007. And of course, with all the mob ties, The Godfather was filmed here, Charlie's Angels, and Robbie Knievel, he actually did a stunt over 30 motorcycles and limousines right here at the Tropicana. Over here is where you can see a lot of action. Folks are trying to cash in that last opportunity to win something here or lose something at the Tropicana Las Vegas. As a matter of fact, I think I think I need to try and uh, see what lot of action happens here. Are we gonna win something or are we gonna lose something, y'all? I don't know. Let's find out. So we're here at the Tropicana right before the doors are closed. We're gonna try our hand here on the in the high limit room on the pinball game. I don't know how this is gonna go, but we're gonna put $100 in and we're gonna max bet and see what we can do. Max bet 10 pulls, let's see what happens. We got 10 options, this one right here, right? Pin, ball, wizard. They knew just the right amount of numbers to build this up for this last pull here. Here it goes, last pull. Tropicana in just a couple days, April 2nd, will be closing its doors permanently to make way for the new stadium, the Oakland A's, AKA the new Vegas A's. It's gonna be interesting. So something we learned that's very interesting that we think you'll find interesting is that two days after this closing on April 2nd would have been its 67th anniversary. But from what we've heard from some of the staff is that it's closing because on the 2nd, because of the gaming license. I believe it doesn't want to re-up that license, so therefore it's closing its doors. But also shortly after that April 2nd date, what's going to happen around the perimeter of this property is going to be a 10-foot demolition wall that they're going to construct because they're looking to demolish this property sometime in 2024. So that cost is about $500,000 just to build that demolition wall. So you know what my Vegas locals, just be prepared for more obstruction, delays, traffic that's going to be happening all over the strip. And we have a quick question for you. Do you have a favorite memory of the Tropicana? If you do, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear about it. And let's enjoy one last moment of silence for a legendary spot here in Las Vegas, Tropicana. And on that note, y'all, we'll see you in the next one.